It's got love. It's got monsters. It's got a cool dog. It's got the only cool part of the Iron Fist series. It's got Michael Rooker. And it's got Little Gamora. We're talking about love and monsters. Welcome back to M.L. Miller Frights, a part of the Kings of Horror Network. I'm M.L. Miller. While you might be watching this video on the Kings of Horror Network, I urge you to click over to the M.L. Miller Frights page and give it a like, share with your buddies across the electronic superhighway, and click subscribe to this channel. And don't forget to ring that bell for notifications. Let's get the word out to new folks so we can make this channel and Kings of Horror Network bigger and better. Be on the lookout for a new Kickstarter campaign for an anthology I participated in called Nightmare Theater. It's a collection of short horror stories made by a whole gaggle of talented souls. The project is being helmed by David Schrader and Clay Adams. I paired up with my pirouette artist extraordinaire, Carlos Granda, for a morbidly fun morality tale about filmgoers who dare break the rules of common courtesy in the wrong theater. If you're interested in fun, scary, and gory horror, please support the Nightmare Theater Kickstarter campaign. Look below for a link. Love and Monsters was just released from Paramount Pictures on demand and digital download. It's directed by Michael Matthews and written by Brian Duffield and Matthew Robinson. When a giant asteroid threatens to destroy Earth, the powers that be decide to decimate it with nuclear weapons. They succeeded, but the nuclear fallout transformed all creatures great and small into giant rampaging monsters. Seven years later, humanity has taken to underground, fending off the occasional monster attack, but living a peaceful and simple existence and making do with what they can. Joel, Dylan O'Brien, was separated from his high school girlfriend, Amy, played by Iron Fist's Jessica Henwick, seven years ago when the monsters arrived but managed to track her down via radio recently. Amy's camp is 80 miles away, and though Joe is not known for his survival skills, he decides to take to the surface and find Amy, hoping to rekindle his lost love. On the surface, Joel meets a dog named Boy and a pair of grungy survivors, Clyde, played by Michael Rooker, and Minnow, played by Avengers Infinity Wars' Ariana Greenblatt who helped teach him the lay of the land and how to survive the various monsters that roam the surface, savage and hungry to eat anything that moves. Love and Monsters is more of an adventure comedy than horror. Yes, there are disgusting and beastly monsters roaming around, but for the most part, it's a high-stakes actioner. While the premise is a cross between Zombieland and Godzilla King of Monsters, Love and Monsters still manages to be pretty entertaining, This is mostly due to the very likable cast and a sense of humor that is prevalent from beginning to end. Dylan O'Brien is capable as the hapless hero. Every quality you think of for a big-budget action hero is something he doesn't possess, but he still manages to entertain with a sarcastic wit and a goal that is so blindly dumb that you find yourself rooting for him to succeed despite his many faults. Michael Rooker is always entertaining, And while his role here is much broader than most, he still delivers a heartfelt performance as a gruff survivor who reluctantly trains Joel. Little Ariana Greenblatt steals the show as a 10-year-old with a potty mouth, a mean bow and arrow, and a whole lot of attitude. It's fun seeing this 10-year-old teach Joel how to survive in the monstrous world. Greenblatt provides some of the more hilarious moments in the film, Her role definitely derived from the feral child from the road warrior with her large matted hair and enthusiasm despite the end of the world setting. I also want to point out how strong Jessica Henwick is here. She's often the best actress in every film she is in and succeeds at it here too. While she seems a bit older than O'Brien, you can understand why Joel would risk his life to get back with her. I can't wait until she really breaks out because she is a really fine actress. Love and Monsters is relatively predictable and follows a lot of tropes in order to tell its story. This is a novice to expert story for Joel, and while it is all awfully familiar, I was entertained throughout. The effects are surprisingly good, 
Not the best, but for the most part, the integration between CG and real-life action scenes work. There are some strongly thrilling moments throughout Love and Monsters, and damn it if I wasn't caught up in the story and pulling for Joel to find his lost love. The film also manages to have a couple of twists and turns towards the end as well, which was pretty cool. These characters are likable, and the actors played them well. I don't want to oversell Love and Monsters. It's a big, loud, and formulaic adventure romp, but I was caught up in its charm. If you're able to shove aside some of the cynicism for big budget fare, I think you might be as taken with Love and Monsters as much as I was. That'll be it for today. If you like this video, please pound that thumbs up button. Share this video with your social media addicted pals. If you're looking for written reviews, you can find them on mlmillerwrites.com. That's where you can also find more countdowns. Don't forget I have two horror comic book trade paperbacks you should look for. Grave Trancers is out right now. And Pirouette is going to be out November 18th. It collects never-before-published issues, and you can still order it through Diamond Order Code APR201712. And don't forget about that Kickstarter campaign for Nightmare Theater, where Carlos Granda and I offer up one of our short stories. Check links below for information about all of these comics. And be sure to subscribe to this channel, and ring that bell for notifications to be the first to see my future videos. Thanks so much for your time, and take care. You're doomed to live the life you're meant to be Stuck inside your reality You're